Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with garlic and citrus mojo pork. That's right, this Caribbean-inspired marinade is good on so many things. In fact, we used it on some skirt steak a while back, and that recipe's gotten rave reviews. But if I had to pick one kind of meat and one kind of cut where this garlic citrus herb marinade really shines, it would be with some nice succulent pork shoulder. And when I eat this, it always makes me feel happy. So yes, the mojo is good for the mojo. And to get started, the first thing we'll do is put together this very, very simple marinade. And for me, that begins with a whole bunch of fresh mint, as well as an equally generous amount of fresh oregano. We will also need a whole bunch of garlic, followed by the third of our three mandatory ingredients, which would be our citrus. And I'm going to use some freshly squeezed orange juice, plus the juice from a couple limes. And what we're really supposed to use here is something called sour orange or bitter orange, which in certain locations is not easy to find. But I think the orange-lime combo here does a good job of substituting. And that's it. We'll go ahead and season this up with some freshly ground black pepper, a lot of salt, since we're going to marinate a lot of meat. We'll also do some cumin. And if you can, try to get it all into the cup. But anyway, I continue down with some smoked paprika, plus some dry oregano, and then I did add one more pinch of cumin, since I thought that spill was the universe telling me I needed a little more. Oh yes, always be on the lookout for signs and omens. And then I finished up with some olive oil, as well as a little touch of cayenne. And that's it, I cleaned up the counter on my way to get the immersion blender, since all we have to do to finish this is blend it until it's relatively smooth. And while I do that, let's go over a very important point. If you wanted to, you could make some extra marinade, and then use that as a sauce for the finished pork. But if you do, you just want to add a pinch of salt to the sauce, since what we put in is going to be too much. So you would add a lot less, and then just salt your meat directly, and then proceed as shown, which is a fine way to go, and I've done it that way. But personally, I prefer to use the caramelized pan drippings as a sauce, along with some freshly squeezed lime juice. And we'll talk a little more about this later. But either way, once our mojo marinade is done, we can move on to prep our pork. And what I have here is a three and a half pound piece of pork shoulder that they've tied up and called a roast. And before we marinate it, I think we should go ahead and give it the old polka polka all over, which is gonna help that marinade penetrate the meat. And speaking of penetration, we'll go ahead and pierce that on all sides, which was kind of a fun game for me since I was trying to avoid cutting the string. And then once that's been accomplished, we can go ahead and transfer that into whatever we're going to marinate it in, which for me is usually a zip top bag. But some viewers were giving me a hard time about throwing those away, and they said I should be doing it in a reusable container. So this time at least, that's what I'm doing. And that's it. We will pour over our marinade, and we'll go ahead and toss our meat until it's thoroughly coated. And once that's been accomplished, I like to marinate this in the fridge, tossing occasionally for about 24 hours, at which point, if you have a favorite way of cooking a pork shoulder, feel free to take it from here, since this will be amazing on a smoker, as well as many other low and slow cooking techniques. Okay, the main point of this video is actually the marinade, but in a few moments, I'm gonna show you a very, very simple, virtually effort-free way to roast this. Oh, and if you're not using a bag, and you are using a container like this, let's go ahead and ladle any of that excess marinade over the top. And that's it, once that's been thoroughly slathered and smothered, We'll go ahead and pop on the lid. And like I said, marinate that for about 24 hours, at which point we'll pull it out and cook it any which way we want. And what I'm gonna do is add some sliced onions to this roasting pan and then make a little space in the middle where I'm gonna place the pork fat side up, which is of course standard roasting procedure. Okay, no matter what piece of meat it is, if there's fat on one side, we always want that on top so the fat bastes the meat while it roasts. And then what we'll do is take any of that excess marinade and spoon that over our onions, which is gonna help create some of the best pan drippings you will ever taste. And then to add a little bit of extra moisture, once we have that marinade transferred in and around those onions, I like to pour in about a half a cup of cold fresh water, although you could use some stock if you wanted. And then our last official act before this goes in the oven would be to maybe sprinkle a little more salt over the top. Okay, you don't have to, but I live in constant fear of under-seasoned meat, so I did sprinkle a little more on top. 
And that's it. This is now ready to transfer into the center of a 300 degree oven for about five hours or until the meat is tender and we've reached an internal temp of about 190. And this is what mine looked like after about four hours. And I decided to pull it out and flop it on its side since this was kind of a narrow roast and I didn't want it to fall over on its own and splash grease all over my oven. So I repositioned and then basted generously, which by the way, you can do as this roasts as many times as you want, right? You can't really baste too much. And in case you're wondering if this is the best way to cook a pork shoulder, no, it is not. It's just the easiest. All right, like I said, you could carefully smoke this or use countless other methods where you start hot and end up slow and wrap it partway through. But if you're into the minimum amount of steps that still will produce a very succulent piece of pork, this really does work beautifully. But anyway, I gave that a thorough basting and then I popped it back in for another hour or so until my internal temp was about 190 and my moho pork shoulder looked like this. Oh yeah, because we didn't cover it, we're gonna get a beautifully dark crust, which because we're not smoking, we're not allowed to call a bark. But we can't check out the appearance too long because as soon as this comes out of the oven, we wanna wrap it in foil, and then we will let this sit and rest for one hour. No, I'm not joking. Okay, we could eat it now, but by letting it rest and letting that heat even out and those juices redistribute, we're gonna end up with a better piece of pork. So it was not easy, but that's what I did. At which point I uncovered it and gave it another basting, which reminds me, is your pork roast, if your pan's drying out, just add another splash of water. And then after basting, we can go ahead and serve this short, dark, and handsome pork up. Except I didn't. I went ahead and garnished with a few sprigs of herb, since I have to take a few contractually obligated pictures. But after that, I grabbed a couple forks, and I was very excited to dig in and give this a taste, since as you will find out, it smells insanely delicious. But let me give you a tip. If you had some, make sure you cut off those strings first. Okay, right here I was so confused. Since pork cooked to about 190 to 195 should pull apart very easily. And I couldn't understand why that wasn't happening until I realized my fork was catching the strings. So I felt better and I was able to pull off a couple pieces regardless. And I spooned over some of those unbelievably flavorful pan drippings and I took a bite. And that, my friends, for how little effort we put into this, really was outstanding. But above and beyond the taste, the key to getting that great texture is to make sure, like I said, you get this up to at least 190 to 195 internal temp. Although I should clarify, you could pull this at like 175, 180, and you would still have delicious tender pork, but it is not gonna be pull it apart tender. And you would have to slice it to serve it instead. So if you want it that way, go ahead. I mean, you are after all the bojo of your moho, and speaking of people with bad hair, I really do prefer mine cooked this far, where I can eat it in larger chunks if I want, but I still have the option to pull it apart into smaller pieces like this, which of course works great piled up on a bun for a moho pulled pork sandwich. But anyway, figuring out how to eat this is gonna be pretty easy. And normally I wouldn't feel the need to give you any more serving suggestions, except I am gonna show you one plated shot where I served this pork over some of my famous drunken baked beans along with, of course, those pan drippings, which I keep raving about. And then I love a little bit of fresh lime squeezed over, which really helps cut through all the richness. And like I said, if you want to use the marinade as the sauce, as long as it's seasoned properly, go ahead. That is a very popular option. But personally, I do prefer just that simple squeeze of lime. Oh, and don't worry, I'm definitely going to show you how to make these drunken beans in an upcoming video. I think that's going to be the video after the next one. So stay tuned for that very soon. But no matter what you serve this incredible moho pork with, or what method you use to cook it, I really do hope you give this a try soon. So please follow the links below for the ingredient amounts, a printable written recipe, and much more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.